Welcome home. This is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection, joined by Adam Talley with Talley Insurance. Good to see you. I feel like we've been ships passing in the night. I haven't seen you in a while. It has. And, and as as promised, not only did I go to Ren Fair this past weekend, I kidnapped someone. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Yes. I actually kidnapped the tallest person I can find. The tallest person you can find? I'm so tall right now. Wow. Okay. I like so, that. um... Name and occupation, ma'am. Um, my name's Madeline. I'm a stilt walker, and uh, awesome. I also perform a haywire circus show. A haywire circus yes. show. So what does that involve? Um, a lot of balancing, mostly tight wire walking. Okay. How high? How high are you? Oh, uh, the wire's not too high. I have a dance wire that's about four feet, but that's plenty okay. high for me. Did they put a net under you? No, no net. A any any bales of hay? Leaves, no, maybe. No, no, hey. Do you scare children? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're on your stilts, you're like, what, 8, 12, 16, 20 meters tall? On the stilts, <laughs> I'm 8 feet. <laughs> 8 feet. <laughs> meters. That'd be like 60 feet. It should be gone really tall. That'd be very tall. You can take over Tokyo. <laughs> right. Uh, so I understand you do this professionally. I do. So yes. not, so you, you, you do a Ren fair here. Or as we call it, Barf, Bay Area Ren Fest. Yes. Barf. <laughs> and this is the last weekend of Barf. Um, so you do the Ren Fair here, but you also do one up in Phil, uh, Kansas, uh, <laughs> Turkey? St. Louis. It's <laughs> one of those Middle West you, states. One of those. You weren't, any, you weren't anywhere close. <laughs> anywhere close. So how do you get into stilt walking? I wake up one morning and say, I'm, wanna, I, I'm, I'm a short person and I want to be taller than everyone else. And then you hit your growth spurt and you're like, I'm really tall? I mean, I do really enjoy that with the stilt walking. I get to be tall for once. Um, but I went to circus school and they're like, here, you need to try all these things. And stilt walking was one of them. Where did you go to circus school? Where um, I started in St. Louis okay. at Circus Harmony. and. Okay. I did a pre-professional program there with them, and then from there I went to Circus College okay. in Philadelphia. Wow. Well, unfortunately, I understand that her Philadelphia college did not have uh, an undergrad in clowning. No undergrad. No. Okay, just no. graduate clowning. Hey, was it graduate clowning? Um, you can learn clowning if that is your thing. But that was, I want to, I want to be tight while you're walking. Yes, I'm, I'm not gotcha. a clown. Now, when you are on the stilts, are you in like a jester type get up or what's the, what's No, she didn't, she didn't take clowning out. Listen, well, she, listen, listen, listen. I feel like you guys are starting to muck up the show. I'm <laughs> glad I'm here. Welcome, Madeline. <laughs> hey, thank you. We're talking about the area rent fest. I know. The fun fact, Pat's family mm -hmm. was from the circus world. Oh. If he's on the other side, I'm surprised he hasn't chimed in. He's probably doing traffic in another city. Yeah, he does a lot of traffic and weather on Friday mornings. So, welcome. I think Thank I you. saw you there. They had a media day, which was not so media. Yes, it was a I little was weird. There. <laughs> <laughs> he popped in and out. So Thanks for coming. Yeah, what is the tallest you've been? Um, Both on stilts and in the air. Oh, boy. Um, on stilts, probably 10 feet. And then in the air probably 50 that was um i was doing aerial tr silks so 50. now now you had a that's big still something uh, to catch yeah that, yeah right? that okay. time that All time, right. time yeah, i had yeah. a mat yeah um, well, surely you're uh, not afraid of heights right i'm not afraid of heights i'm scared of falling <laughs> <laughs> oh so you are um yeah, so... Well, it's always the sudden stop that gets you. Right. It, it is. It really is. What, um, so you said you've done 10-foot stilts. What's, like, the highest that people do on stilts? Like, oh. how high does it get? Obviously not 60 feet, like... Hey, when I saw I was talking. Lion King at the Straz, Stilt Giraffe was my favorite character, and Stilt Giraffe was easily 25 feet tall. Really? Well, there you go. That's more that than high. I know. Yeah. That's wild. How, how do you get up there in those? Um, I sit on something slightly tall and then just kind of push my way up. Really? Yeah. So have you ever lost your balance trying to get up in them? Um, I've not really. I've stumbled, but, you know, you just kind of... I, had, I had some questions in my head yesterday for her because they sent me so, you so late. I've been yes, asking since yes. last week. So you've got lots of questions. What She's actually done I this have in a Turkey. lot too. I have a lot too. So yeah. what's the bottom of the stilts look like? Is it like a peg, like a like a fence post, or is it like do you have like a platform, like a like a foot? Like how does it look? I'm very curious. That's a this. great question. So there are certain time types of stilts. I use peg stilts. So um, 
It's just a rubber stopper at the bottom. A lot of people will compare it to a horse hoof in okay. shape. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So when you're... I mean, th th this Ren Fair here in Dade City, which is... Um, last weekend. Last, last weekend. weekend of the festival. This is the last weekend of the festival. Mm -hmm. The one in Dade City has much more even ground than Mosey. Did you do it when it was in Mosey? I did not do Mosey, but you're yeah. making me very curious about what it was like. It was, it, was, it was dusty. It was dirty. There were tree roots everywhere. I remember a lot of holes, too. A lot of holes. Ground. So, yeah, I was wondering. I had not seen your kind before <laughs> um, they moved to Dade City. Now that you mention that, I don't remember seeing stilt walkers. Okay. At on Fowler Avenue when they were by Mosey. As the, as, the, as the insurance advisor, I feel like, you know, that's a liability. <laughs> well, now they have two. They have... We have three. Three. I only saw... The, the person that walking around as a tree was pretty awesome. Yes, that's oh, Sir Oakheart. Yeah. Yes. So you were not a tree. I am not a tree. Okay. I am all in purple, and I occasionally join the maple. <laughs> Did you have blue hair? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Blue hair. How do you get it? When, when, when I understood we were getting the still walker, I got excited that we were getting Sir Oakheart. Gotcha. Yes. But now I'm even more excited we get the person that gets to terrorize children around the maple. <laughs> <laughs> Does he play any of those pranks like the like the tree guy you see all over like TikTok and Facebook that jumps out at people? I have Does he not do that? Seen it. He's no. he's normally pretty nice. Okay. He's a different foliage than the rest of the trees yes. there. He, he stands out. He does stand out. Got it. So you said you do the one here and you do the one in St. Louis. Yes. Do you travel around to other places or just go between those two? Um, I do. So the furthest I've been was actually last year. I went to Turkey. And, oh, wow. Okay. Um, I was a performer at one of the resorts there. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That is so fun. I love it. How did you, how'd you get started in this? Can um, I ask you that? They didn't, so I just... <laughs> we asked everything else. <laughs> everything else. Well, we, we, there was the Cloud College, so we kind of got the basic. I the popped start. in a minute or so yes. late, so... Um, so what happened was I was a runner. I did cross country. Okay. And then I kind of stopped doing that, and I was... I'm like, I don't want to run alone. That's, that's kind of boring. I need something fun to keep me active, and circus was what I ended up with. Like I'm there to evolve. Runners are like wolves, right? Don't they usually go in packs? Yeah. Or you ran cross country by yourself? Like I group. Yeah. So, okay. so how do you explain that to your parents? I mean, you're you're going off to college. You're you're gonna you're gonna specialize in something. They're hoping doctor, lawyer, engineer, architect, <laughs> insurance agent, real estate agent, and you're I'm like, gonna have fun. I, I want to go to clown college. Oh, they were all in actually. They were. They, yes. Um, although their options were circus school or a gardener so i mean the both were very kind of active activities there's yeah. a lot of money to be made in gardening i was there, actually there talking is. with on tuesday at an event i was talking with the the lady that runs the the natural nursery up in seminole heights mm -hmm. um, i forget the exact name the one on nebraska that's right there yeah the one on nebraska about the the, the holistic plants and things mm -hmm. of that nature mm -hmm. but yeah i mean it's it's would that be horticulture? Is that what that would be? Horticulture. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look well, at that. A lot yes. of industry there. A lot of industry. That's a big word. <laughs> I know. On a Friday before 10 o'clock, the coffee's not even done yet. I mean, woo. So <laughs> what is fire. this? Ren Fair, uh, the barf. What is the <laughs> final weekend Wait, going to entail? The Barrier Ren Fest. Oh, yes. I missed it. Okay. <laughs> um... Sorry, could you repeat the I question? Know, what, is, what is the last theme of the last weekend? Are you doing a masquerade oh. ball this year? Is uh, I, What's the final theme? You know, that's a that theme off. I should know, and I don't know the theme. I thought I saw that off. Did I? You know what? She gave me these. Uh, oh, here they are. I got them late, like yes. after 8.30 last night, so they almost that's didn't make it in the outline. Well, for you. But I started, I started my day with yoga at 6 a.m., so... I, I was getting tired by late, but so the uh, this weekend's themed weekend high seas adventure bon voyage. Oh, it's the tattoo well, competition. They invite all the tattoo pals to participate in a tattoo contest to show off their artwork. Do they do real tattoos there? Um, they don't do real tattoos. Okay. There's an airbrush tattoo oh, okay. spot. Yes, for the children and adults. Okay. I see you as a big face ages. paint kind yeah, of guy. Yeah, definitely. No. Be like unless a fish it's across unless the sunscreen. Unless it's sunscreen. Well, we're going to have some more Ren Fest talk, but 
before we do, I'm going to get into the numbers as soon as we come back after the break. Do we have any tickets to give away? For the week. Uh, we, do. we do. I'm told Abigail's sent them with you or she's sending I more. Have or them. Yes. We have more four packs of tickets to give out. 813-377-2775. That's 813-377-2775. If you want some Ren Fair tickets, we have some four packs. Just text the word BARF. As for Bay Area Ren Fest, we, uh, I'm gonna say three three seven seven two seven. Hello to, to one of our listeners. I missed him. He was like leaving when I was coming in, and I missed you. I'm sorry, but thanks for listening. We'll be right back. Welcome home, Leo Kane here with Barrel Engineering and Inspection in the mid part of the hour with your market update. Yes, the market update. So this week we have new listings coming in at six eighty nine. Uh, that's a little. That's substantially lower than last I month. I know. I'm telling last you, the inventory is tight. So I'll tell you what I'm seeing in the market as well. The uh, pending listings coming in at nine eighty three. That's exactly what I'm. That's exactly what I'm seeing in the market. Sold is eight oh nine. So that number has been kind of sold's been a little bit neck and neck with new listings, uh, but that's higher and new listings is lower. If this you is notice. showing a shrinking market again. This is showing yes. we don't have enough listings to cover the ones going under contract to cover the ones that are being sold so I we got that shrinking I'll tell market. you yes we definitely have a shrinking market because what we're seeing in the market is stuff that's been sitting for a little while is starting to get gobbled up it's it's like this weird little spring spike that yeah. we've seen in the past but it's different and i've heard that march and april tend to be the busiest months for real estate in in the calendar year yeah it's when it picks up because i feel like people are here for spring break so some of your northerners that are buying kind of do it during that time, uh, families that are looking at, to move over the summertime start now during this time so they can wrap up the school year and then get... Do you get a lot of longer contracts around this time? No, we're still reason? seeing 30, or, 45 days. Or they'll still close and yeah. just sit on it for a month or two until the kids are out. I mean, well, I mean, it's a for some people, if you have the luxury, it's a transition, right? You can close on another property and yeah. then take your time to move or do what you want to do to the house before you move in, right? Like, mm -hmm. prime example, the house that we sold, we always wanted to coat the garage floor. Mm -hmm. But we didn't do it before we moved in. So I feel like that's one of those things you got to do it before you move in yes. or it's too late. Or paint. You know, paint's yes. kind of a lot easier before you start putting furniture in, that kind of stuff. Well, yeah. and rearranging the closets, right? Like if you want to take out the wire racks and put in like California closets or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like do all that stuff during that time. But we're definitely seeing a spike, Leo, in the market and in, in the active buyers on the market. It's you, you, We can really feel it on the listing side. Normally, I carry about 10 active listings at all times but this market's been so sparse that I haven't had 10 all the time, but I've had at least three to five minimum all the time active. I have one left, and I just got an offer on it last night. Very nice. So do you think... I've got a um, bunch of new stuff coming, really exciting stuff coming. Are you seeing coming. the prices go up um, because of the lack of inventory? I mean, we're definitely seeing a, a I, shrinking inventory. I don't want to say yes to that, but I feel like the answer is absolute stabilization with maybe a tick. I I felt like we never had that dip, right, mm -hmm. that we were looking for. We dip. I mean, right, fourth quarter, right? I, I just didn't think that was the dip. Like, I thought mm -hmm. there was a different one coming. but you that, that was like the pre-dip. That could have been the dip, yeah. I mean, so well, it's a little holiday. Right? Holiday stuff, we slow down a little bit. There's so a little... pricing-wise compared to, you know, same house last year. Right, where are we looking we're, we're, at? Pricing wise, four, we're still up. Four or five percent. Yeah. Up. Okay. We're, we're still not, up. We're not seeing the 12, 13 12, percent 12, year over 13 year. 13 percent is so unrealistic. This right? is your question. The Florida Realtors Report. That's why I leave this in the studio and don't mm -hmm. throw it away. But mm -hmm. February 2023, you were asking about median not sales price. Right. Never right? use averages. Let we're up, listening audience never use averages. Only use up, median. We're up 3.1 percent from last year, and that okay. was a crazy market mm -hmm. last year, and we're still up 3.1 yeah. percent. And that was before the interest rate started taking a... No, they were already... Were they already the, like, like the first one had already happened. No, they were still like... You could get twos and threes at that time. Right, so that's what I'm saying. It's before, that's before anything happened too. So like right. this is... that The average uh, monthly mortgage on 380... Even though it went up 3%, the average monthly mortgage is probably a lot higher on that. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's higher. I mean, we did the numbers. You're anywhere from three to... 
probably six hundred dollars higher on a housing payment mm -hmm. because of the rate so right? but marry the house date the rate if the housing market prices are high and mm -hmm. the interest rates are high we're pushing uh, we're pushing affordable housing out the window in the bay area so okay. are we attracting a certain type of buyer um maybe like a lawyer so a doctor are we attracting certain types of professions into the a high tech area i know ybor city tried for a while a tech initiative to attract tech businesses are we attracting that caliber i'm so glad that you asked that so yes we're still getting some tech yes we're still getting a lot of businesses that move into the area regularly but outside of that um, a lot of the activity, in my opinion, has been the Hometown Heroes program. Which is a great Which program. is like a hundred different occupations. It's mm -hmm. not just police, nurses, firefighters. There's Teachers a lot. Teachers on there, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Daycare, yeah. daycare workers. Yeah. Wait, is this the one that encompasses like the... The, the checkout clerks at the, the grocery stores? No. Oh. They don't. But, but it does they, encompass, this it one. does have a lot. I went to a lunch and learn. It's a lot. It, it, it's yeah. so, comprehensive, to say the least. What I want to talk to you about is we had $100 million initially when that kicked off. That kept Florida strong. Then there was another $100 million that was added. And now, it's a perfect segue into what I was going to talk about next, Leo. This week, right, for the last several days, and today's the last day of what we call GARD, G-A-R-D, mm -hmm. which is Great American Realtor Days. And and this is where literally realtors come to Tallahassee and they lobby for things that are important around home ownership. And I've done this before. It was very, very exciting. It was a fun time. I really should have done it when DeSantis was there because I, I like him and I might have missed that opportunity. But anyway, you can't say you like him on our show. I, I that do. Makes you I like a him. Political pundit. No, he's he's smart. He's business wise, and he's good for Florida. Are you so, going to vote for him for president? I I would. Yeah, and I don't even disclose my political party, but I definitely. I would have to, yes. Do you think he can I beat, don't want to lose him in Florida. Do you think he can beat whoever the Democrats have coming in 2024? Yeah, I do. I think he'd beat anyone, pretty much. But anyway, aside from that, so over a 1,000 realtors every year, including this year, lobby in Tallahassee for things that affect home ownership, okay? So this is all during the annual legislative session in Tallahassee. Um, it's about a three-day event. There's dozens of people that come. There's lawmakers. Um, there's all sorts of legislative briefings for different gr member groups, right? And they are basically lobbying for things that they feel are important. So Realtor members, of course, lobby for things related to home ownership. And I'll have you know that on the 29th, just a couple days ago, Ron DeSantis signed into law Senate Bill 102, which is related to housing, exactly of what you discussed Affordable about. housing. So, so basically, St. Petersburg last week passed a an ordinance that they turned a whole bunch of high trafficked areas into quadplexibility. If you can make that sound any more complicated. Multifamily. Multifamily, yes. Multifamily. So they have this up to four units. Up yes. to four Sorry. units in certain corridors in St. Pete. So we're going to follow those zip codes closely to see if there's any activity spikes in there. And now you're saying that on the state level we're, we're attacking affordable housing. Because you've been saying yes. it for a decade, uh, Katrina, that affordable housing is vanishing over a decade really but and it's funny i had a conversation this week from someone you know someone that moved from san diego and i said well, what's your take on this what's your opinion you know because i've been saying for at least 15 years we're going to be like california ultimately where if you don't own you can't afford to buy and it's you know the the median price just keeps going up 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 what do you think about that? Do you think we have a lot of similar traits to places like San Diego? How do you mm -hmm. think we compare? And he said, oh, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. And every person I've ever talked to from San Diego says the same thing about Tampa. Wait a second. We don't have great wine regions. We don't have earthquakes. What are they talking about? No, but like in terms of like entertainment, food, just the lifestyle. I mean, it's it's better, I think, if you ask me. But anyway, Senate Bill 102 is all about housing, and they're calling it the, the Live Local Act. And that's because they don't want, you know, police officers and teachers having to commute an hour or more just to go to work, right? Because you'll lose them. And I've seen that play out before. I lived in the early 2000s. I lived in, I worked in Naples. I had to live in Fort Myers. And there was just no way for you to live in Naples if you had a normal job, you had to be a retiree or have this uh, one of these fancier jobs. It's just the housing, the, the cost of rents down there was just insane. And that was brought about by the Southeast Everglades Restoration Program, where they basically said, Collier County said, hey, all of this land now, 
is we're delineating it wetlands. We're not allowing you to build on it. That shrunk the ab available amount of land to build on. And the prices moved. Prices went up and that pushed the workforce into Lee County, which then meant your workforce, um, anyone in the server industry, I was playing in a band at the time in, in the bars downtown, you had to drive Just from Lee County. A band. Sorry. Yeah. What did you play again? Drums? I can't no, that. Bass guitar. Bass guitar. Okay. But you had to drive. I had to live in Fort Myers and I had to drive down to Naples. I just couldn't find a place to live and I didn't want to live with four or five others. How long of a commute was that? It was about 45 minutes to an hour. Oof. Do yeah. we, are there still any uh, videos in the archives of you and your band playing? Oh, definitely. Okay. Can we bring those one day? Maybe we could. Is it metal? Pet. It's metal, right? No, we actually had two bands. We had a band that was that we did do metal, and then we had a band that was the metal. What I like to call <laughs> chick rock, which what? is chick rock, which is dudes with acoustic guitars. <laughs> That you would play at a bar, and they did like the '90s and early 2000s alternative Chick covers. Chick rock. Chick rock. All right. I like the metal. I w bring some videos in. I'd like to well, uh, more to, more I'd about like Leo playing yeah. from his band days. So, <laughs> so you don't you? What would you say if I told you I had hair down to the back of my? I believe it. The small of my back. Yeah, I believe. I it. would. I want to see the picture. Try to see that. Yes, I would, exist. I would pay real monies. Well, you can look oh, it up on Moose Space. On, on what? Moose Space. Moose Space. Place for cows. No, MySpace. <laughs> oh my gosh, is that still around? I don't know if the Is email I had when MySpace was around is still around. 813-377-2775. Yeah, text BARF. We'll get you well, some tickets. Yeah, text BARF to 813-377-2775. We will get you hooked up for tickets to the Tattoo Festival that's happening at Ren Fair this <laughs> Tattoo weekend. Tattoo Fest. And we're going to talk more about the $711 million that is getting infused into Florida as soon as we come back. Stick around. And welcome home. This is Adam Tally with Tally Insurance. Are you sure about you're, that? I think so. You're, you're laughing about it. You're, I just love the music. Uh, you're listening to uh, Tampa Home Talk. And before we uh, uh, dive back into the affordable housing and everything, I did want to touch base on a little bit of what we're going to be talking about next week, which is since we're talking about state bills and that kind of stuff. Um, 154. 154. So these are changes that have been made to... Uh, citizens, where if you are a citizen's policyholder, uh, regardless of flood zone, they are now requiring you to carry flood insurance. And not only are you... Is that official now or it's coming oh, out that's official? official. It hasn't that's been official. voted in yet. It has not been voted in yet. That's what I was like. I thought it would work. It'll be we voted were... in by next Friday. Okay. Well, anyways. So anything new is going to have to have flood insurance. Correct. Or what if you already have well, a policy? Everything new is already... Ha like renewed or... Wait. If you already have a policy... Let's clear on this. So here's the deal. If you already have a policy and you don't have flood, and you're in a flood zone, so they're starting with the people that are in flood zones. So that's where we're at right now. Okay, so if you're in a flood zone um, and you're with citizens, you have to have flood insurance. Okay, and the flood insurance, here's the caveat. The flood insurance has to either match your coverages on your citizen's policy or be at the maximum that the NFIP allows, which is 250, 100. All right, so you have some people where you know, we, in the past, a way to save money on your flood insurance was to not include contents, right? Because they're only covering it on actual cash value. You know, we've all, as Floridians, we know, we're, we, we know when the flood's coming, right? It's not a surprise to us. There's no flash floods, typically. So you can kind of save some of the important stuff. Right. Um, so, you know, that was a way to save money. Well, now you have Fine. to add the contents back on or you're non-compliant with citizens. So, you know, Which I have is a, a lot of money, sounds isn't like it? A money grab. Sounds it, like a money grab. Yeah. So I have a client who they live in Pinellas County. Um, citizens, they live in a 65 year old home. Citizens is their only option. We could go ENS for 10,000, but you're not going to pay seven extra grand just to like get rid of flood, right? What's ENS? Excess and surplus, oh. which yeah. is just not not as good. And you, you have know? to pay tax on that. And there's exclusions. And yeah. It's almost Ooh. like a named peril policy as opposed to, you know, special form. Speaking of exclusions, I'm running into a lot of things that are happening on Pine Island and Captiva and Sanibel from Hurricane Ian, and there are complete hurricane exclusions. How? That they were it's completely it was excluded from the policy. So if you are in a different topic for a different day, but if you're in a wind zone, a carrier can exclude hurricane. 
They yeah. can exclude wind. And then you'd have to get a wind-only policy through citizens. Mm -hmm. So so how does that work? Like, if you have a hurricane exclusion, and you're in those areas, and then, the Ian, like, Ian rolls in it. Was it Ian that last one? Yeah, Ian, yes. So how does that work? What are they covering? What are they not They're covering? They're not covering anything. They're not covering anything unless you can find a unless loophole, you, which I know several, but you can find a loophole to get coverage. But what's one you, of the loopholes? I'm not going to say on the air right now. Okay. But here's here's the deal. We have call our taxes. If you're if you are in that area and you have been excluded by wind, I can hook you up with an attorney that can help you on a loophole. Eight one three three seven seven two seven seven five. That's eight one three three seven seven two seven seven five. Text the word help. So <laughs> the here's so if you, we have a for instance, let's say we have a home that's in a wind zone. Okay, and you know their normal policy excludes wind. We offer them the citizens' wind-only policy, and they, if they have a mortgage, they have to buy it. So anybody that has a mortgage, this is you don't have to worry about what Leo's talking about because they're you wouldn't be able to that insurance have wouldn't that fly, policy, right? Yeah. Um, but I think there's a lot of people with so we, paid-off houses that need some other options. So yeah. here's the here's the thing. So look I, at the elderly population. So I quoted a guy. Now this is you know economy is a scale here, so take take this these premiums with a grain of salt. But his um, lives in a multi-million dollar home on Bayshore, okay? His, in those type homes, you got to go to these specialty carriers anyways. Uh, without wind, okay, it was $8,000. With wind, it was $38,000. Mm -hmm. So, and he would have a 2 to 5% deductible depending on the situation. So you're talking, you know, fifty dollars to $100,000 out of pocket before, you know, they're going to cover anything. It makes sense, though. But so, so he saves thirty grand a year plus the out of pocket cost. He could probably replace, yeah, just repair half the roof. So he saves thirty anyway. grand, but what was the premium? Do you know? The premium was thirty eight thousand oh. dollars. If he's saving, if he has wind, if he's saving the thirty grand and taking that money, and so now he's an eight thousand dollar premium. Right, with no okay. wind. If he's that saving is. thirty grand a year and he takes that money and puts it in a bank account, he's going to come out ahead on that. I, I agree. Well, he needs to get with the CD. A, with a, like, and like you said, well, like I said, with a forty to $100,000 deductible, depending on the, the circumstance. Yeah, I agree. So, so you, you know. know. Citizens, this little footnote here. What is a Citizens inc insurance seeks 14.2% rate hike. Yeah. What the? Well, that would be... First of all, they need to raise their they need to raise their rates, cause, or every citizen's policyholder is going to get an assessment. But but if they the raise their rates fourteen point two percent and then tack on mandatory flood, and that's raised fourteen point two percent, that's a money grab. I don't know if it's a money grab as much as a uh, making sure they have enough money to pay their claims. They don't pay their claims. Well, they pay their attorneys. I was going to say they pay their attorneys. Either way, the. <sighs> They they need to do that, or because everybody else in the industry is going up fifty, sixty, eighty percent, hundred percent. I mean, I saw this one that was three hundred percent, and the the insurance that, market is broken. We should be doing way let, more. Let, let, let's let's start next week. Let's talk about yeah. positive yeah. things. We'll go yeah. negative. We'll, next we'll week. talk next week. <laughs> we'll talk negative yeah. next week. Let's be doom and gloom next week, Adam. All right, so let's talk about the good things. So Senate Bill. 102 for housing so happy about this live Another local live local 700 and million 711 million dollars infused back into florida it's actually the largest ever in history and it's double what they gave last year awesome. so happy about this because you know where this money is coming from sadowski fund sadowski fund Taxpayers. which is what this is for Pe when people have a mortgage right and they buy a property that tax that's on there so many times politicians will swoop it for other things, and it's actually going towards housing. So I'm very happy about that. Mm -hmm. So some of the things they're doing, another $100 million for Hometown Heroes. Remember, we talked about that. 259, did I say 1,000 million? Yeah, Sorry, 100 million. million for Hometown Heroes. 259 million for sale. That's financial assistance for affordable housing um, in underused areas. Another 252 million for SHIP. That is a down payment assistance Love program. So with sale, that's a state apartment incentive loan? So yeah, where they're, they're incentivized to build uh, apartments and affordable housing and that sort of stuff. Okay, so $259 million is available to build apartment buildings. That's pretty neat. And sale does other stuff too, because I've seen that before in down payment assistance, but I think it's a lot for uh, apartments. Um, I forget what SHIP stands for. Do you uh, remember? It's a home improvement program, because we're, we're registered in Broward County to be a SHIP consultant. So 
Uh, it works like a, for our listening audience, if you're familiar with the Fannie Mae Homestyle Program or the 203K Loan Assistance Program through FHA, that's where you can do a renovation loan inside of a mortgage. SHIP is similar in that you don't need a mortgage. You just commit to living in the property for 10 years and you can get things like doors, windows, upgraded, new AC, modernization. So the SHIP program is very awesome. Is there, the, there's a down payment assistance component to this too because I remember seeing it. What's the, on the SHIP program, what are the qualifications or can anybody qualify? So I, I'm, we'll, have to, we'll get the city in because they do a lot with SHIP. Yeah, we'll have to we'll, get someone yeah. from the city in on SHIP. I mean, it's going to be different from city to city, but there are qualifications Correct. for all these not, programs. Not everybody can just go get a free door. No, there's there's income limitations. There's a whole bunch of information on these programs, but I'm glad to see 252 million infused just door. for this program. Yeah, we should definitely get yeah. we should definitely get a city doing? person right. in <laughs> to talk about on these, ship yeah. and sale. That would be awesome. So 100 million for Florida housing and finance uh, for the completion of projects that were started. So this is where they were talking about how some of these places, you know, for affordable housing and whatnot, were started. Uh, they get all their estimates in the beginning. COVID happened. Everything tripled. Now they weren't able to finish some of these projects. So another Another hundred million went in to actually finish those projects. Um, five or uh, five thousand refund for sales tax on building materials for workforce housing through That's Florida awesome. Housing and Finance. It is, um, and also um, some money also went towards those that are aging out of foster care. So the people that are 18, literally the, when they age out of foster care, they're like, say la vie, here's your bag, good luck. Um, mm -hmm. So th there's definitely a need in the community for that. And also access to more affordable housing. I, I think that's, um, you know, more Section 8 vouchers, more different things like that. I mean, that, that's all awesome, especially when you touch on the foster care. It's really tough because we, we have children in the foster care system that are already at a disadvantage. And when they turn 18 and they're kicked out, quote unquote, onto the street, they're even in a more disadvantage. They don't have the opportunities to go to the college. They're just wondering how they're gonna survive. Mm -hmm. So if, they, if, if homelessness is stopped by providing homes or the ability for people like on the foster care program to have that stability, they could actually better themselves through a technical college or a trade yeah. school or things of there that nature. There should be a transition program where they uh, they, they're able to live here on site for say six months or whatever, and they help give them the, give them the skills to get a job, build a budget, and, and live. And then this other one for uh, building materials for workforce housing that that's an awesome one. I see that a lot in Belize because I spend a lot of time there with the developers in Belize. The successful developments are the ones that have structured and built temporary housing for their workers. Because nice. once your workers are on site, you can do swing shifts. You can do what we call ten on five off. It, your workforce is more happy. They don't have to spend a lot of time commuting. Yeah. So things for building temporary housing for your workforce, that's awesome. Yeah, even if you make like a model center, right, and you put them in there temporarily and then you rent it or sell it or whatever afterward, it makes sense. Also, another little note, two out of four Florida neighborhoods were named the best places to live in the U.S., and they're right here in Tampa. The other two were in Orlando. According to NISH, it's a platform that connects parents and students with schools and colleges. They analyze cities and communities all around the United States using federal and local government data, and then they compare their fighting, findings to their resident ratings. And so their analysis for 2023 shows that two communities right here in Tampa, and again, two in our, our sister community, Orlando, were among the top 25 neighborhoods in the country. Which were they? Um, so, my, hold on, Miami very and... Very niche, by the way. <laughs> very niche. Which, 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 so, what are they? All right, so hold on. So the, let me tell you what they study. So they look at the metrics for the areas in public schools, housing, crime, safety, nightlife, diversity, uh, weather, communities that are family-friendly, highlight uh, waterfront places and all that stuff. So the top ones are Hyde Park, Spanish Town Creek, near downtown Tampa, and also Harbor Island. So that was number four, and Harbor Island was number 11. That's I'm not worried niche. about one through three because we're not in Tampa. Extremely <laughs> niche. Uh, uh, circle, circle Hyde Park on a map for me, please. You know, it's so <laughs> they're saying the median, I don't know about this one, but according to their report, I'll have to double check it, the median home price in Hyde Park is 469 284 I think I'm going to fact check that. It's one. not all of Hyde Park. It's Hyde Park, Spanish Town Creek. Oh, okay. And then the media. So it's a niche of a niche. I got it. Basically, Snow Avenue. So, <laughs> much. rent 1673. And then they're saying Harbor 
Island, almost five hundred four ninety eight nine ninety with rents of twenty three forty eight. Um, they said it was a beachfront town. Like, no, it's a little waterfront town. So they had that a little backwards. We'll be back with a little more information as soon as we get back in our off air number. <laughs> Uh, this sounds like St. Patrick's Day Ren Fair music here. <laughs> what do you think, Matt? Last Alan? weekend. Did, he, did last he pass or no? Last weekend. Pass was... or fail on the music? Yeah. Has he been doing a good job on the music? I think he's been doing a good job. Okay. Yeah. He passed. So I have to say. This is the girl that the fire. Ah, the fire girl swinging music. Gotcha. There's a fire girl swinging at the Renaissance Festival? They can do fire this year. That's one of the benefits of moving from Mosey to Dade City, is they can do fire. Need to add fire you can do all show. sorts of stuff in in pasco county you can't do in hillsborough county that is true but i have to say one of my coworkers <laughs> is an idiot he's in the hospital with a broken ankle because he tried gluing three cans of soda together and using them as stilts <laughs> that'll teach him to get high on coke <laughs> <laughs> teenage that joke <laughs> thank you thank you thank you i told you it was you got a, one you got a episode, cricket one button you can you can click over there what do you think about the stilt walker joke did you like it <laughs> give, me the, give me the cricket sound. Uh, give me the cricket I didn't, sound. Get, I didn't even get a cringe. I just got. Eh. <laughs> it's as good as it's going to get for Stilt Walker joke. I'm just saying. Uh, All right. So mortgage rates hit the lowest level in six weeks. This could be the little spike in the housing that we're seeing. But according to Freddie Mac, 6.32% is the average 30 year fixed rate loan. And that has declined from 6.4%. Two it's supposed to be a ray of hope for our little buyers. You think spring. two banks going out of business would prevent other banks from playing the treasury spread? We'll see. We'll see. Rates are. I mean, I, I think they overshot on the rates personally, and they're leveling that back off. That's what I think. Baby boomers are also passing millennials in their share of home buyers. A National Association of Realtors (NAR). The study showed last year that baby boomers are up 39%. How are baby boomers still around? They, oh, they're totally around. My mom's a boomer. She's around. Baby boomers, like, born right after World War II? Yeah, they're a long cycle. There's two two cycles of baby boomers. Oh, there are? Did we have yeah. two wars? No, but there's, like, pre and post. Like, I for, I looked it up. It's a huge, 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 huge gap. I mean, you got to think, if you were born after World War II, you're in the 40, 45 to 55 55, 45, 65. You're like 70 year, 70 year olds minimum right now. No. Yeah, baby boomers. My yeah. par- my my parents wouldn't be baby boomers. Yeah, you're my born, mom is a boomer, and I'm telling you, she is she is not that old. Your mom can't be a boomer. She is. Okay. I'm looking it up. While you're looking it up, we're going to talk more about Renfair. Are there yeah, a lot of baby boomers at Renfair? Oh. Well, yeah. What are the sure, Renfair yeah. demographics? <laughs> yeah. What are okay, the demographics look, of a Renfair? Right here. Baby boomers are celebrating birthdays between 59 and 77. Okay. They are just below the silent generation, born from 28 to 45. <laughs> silent generation is in like they're not around anymore. No, they weren't allowed to talk. Uh, not those guys are 95 to 78. But wow. they're basically saying that's an 18-year period of – because I wouldn't say mil- the millennial age group is 18 years. They keep re- the, the problem with this is they every four or five years, they redefine the brackets. Mm-hmm. Like, I wasn't a Gen X up until I became a Gen X. I was what? a Gen Y. Now, I may or may not be a millennial. I just They just keep <laughs> changing all the titles over and over yeah, again. Yeah, I can ne- no wonder I can never keep it up. But anyway, according to NAR study, 39% of buyers – um, were were boomers while millennials were only twenty eight percent, and the main reason they're saying boomers had more money. So that would yeah. make sense. All right. <laughs> no crap. <laughs> so, do you own a home or do you rent? I do not do either of those things because I'm on the road so much. Oh, do you live out of like a caravan? Yeah, kind of. Traveling troop. Yeah. Did they? Did you have a class about that in clown college? <laughs> no. You did. What do they teach you? Um. So they had. My brain is... Like, is it skills-based, or what all do they teach you? Um, so, our first year of school, it was required to do juggling every day. Okay. You must know how to juggle. Um, and they also had a required aerials class. You could pick between, I'm going to just learn solo aerials, or there was duo aerials, where you do two or three people together on, a same, on the same apparatus. Um, let's see, they taught seer wheel... Um, 
tight wire, of course, which is what I specifically studied. Um, there was a lot of range in terms of the circus skills. And then they had other classes as well that were more um, business focused. So, so you... The business of the circus. The business. The you, dark side. The, the, <laughs> the business. So you are based out of a town, but you don't have like a, a, a standard place you, you go to when you're not doing your thing? I mean, I visit my parents, and I mostly just, I've reconfigured He's, he's worried my about car. your mail. Yeah, oh, yeah, mail? I, send, I send important documents to my parents' okay, house. That, that, and, <laughs> and, and, I wonder you're registered. And then anything that I need immediately, I get sent to wherever so, I am. So your driver's license is your parents' address? Yeah. In Missouri. I, I travel. Kansas no, City, Kansas. Oh, Kansas. So, Kansas. so Kansas. 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 out of the track. Five day year, how many days are you on the road? Oh, uh, last year I was on the road a little over eight months. Nice. Um, well, on the road, I was living in, I have that all wrong, ten months. I was in Turkey for eight months, and they provided housing, the company I worked for. So... So do you do like cruise ships and other things too, potentially? I've not done or? cruise ships, but that would be that would, interesting. That would be hard, tightrope walking on the, or still walking well, on the Well, I was going to say, do you think yeah. you could still well, walk on the moving big ship? Ones, I think I could. Well, some yeah, of those big have ones have like whole, you know, theaters and they stuff. They do, they do like, like a Cirque du Soleil type thing. And they're massive, so they're not yeah. rock, you know, obviously maybe not the, I don't know, depends. But that, I know they have performers in that side. So, so, yeah, there's a lot of circus happening So on Ren Faire is two days a week. Yes. What are you doing the other five days a week? Are you doing more promos like this to promote Barf? Or? <laughs> I am constantly practice, 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 practice. Yeah, I have to do the my normal routines. I have to go to the gym. I have to go work on the tight wire, practice my juggling, all that. Um, and then my free time is constantly applying for the next thing because this is only two months, and mm. so... Here you go. Oh, man. You want to juggle? We're going to give her a to juggle. I have to stand for this. Go, stand right in front of the camera okay, here man. in the Facebook. Oh, so she's going to juggle. She's so going to she juggle. Juggling. Oh, what she's, she's also attached to her I'm so attached. She's, she's, attached. she's, she's like, pull, pull that weight out. also not the same weight. They're very light. We embarrassed her on the camera. But Give her some loose on the wire. There you go. There we go. Actually, she's not juggling. Yeah, it counts, right? Okay. In her defense, she was literally tethered to the headset. I'm quite tethered. Yes. Well, so so you spend the the week hunting Prepare, for the next preparing day, preparing for the weekend, and you spend the and preparing for the weekend, rehearsals. doing promos, rehearsals. That's that's yeah. it. so a lot more goes into like I'm as a novice, I would think, hey, they're rent fast. It's going to be people from around this town, shops from around the town. I was amazed to find shops from California, shops from New York. I mean, this is a a worldly or U.S.ly. Events. Yeah, we pop around. <laughs> Real quick, because we're almost out of time. What should someone not miss? Last weekend of the oh. Rad Sounds Festival, we have tickets. 813-377-2775. We'll get them to you. 813-377-2775. What should someone not miss? Um, the circus shows. Right. <laughs> the still walkers, right? So still walkers. my show, my first one is at 1130. And then I also recommend seeing Acrobellum, Rosie Ringround. And then, of course, you can't miss the pubs. All right. Get the, the uh, schedule as soon as you walk pubs. in the door. Thanks for listening. This is Tampa Home Talk. Welcome home.